Hi there, everybody. So I'm bringing up the last activity that I started. Uh, remember the one labeled or named delete later. So I have my title screen. And what we were working on last time was we made um, two ordered pairs that were movable and they had to create a certain slope. Well, what I'd like to do in this video is have the two movable points again, but now I want them to create a certain line. Okay, so we're gonna open up a new screen here and I want to have a graph so they can manipulate the points there, notes that have directions, and then notes for the student feedback. And again, if you don't want the students to know if they're right or wrong, you skip that step. Okay, I'm going to name this graph and since I'm on screen three, graph three. I'm gonna put the directions here. So this will say, click and drag the two points to create the line. And let's make a line here. Actually, let's go a little crazy. We'll go with four thirds X minus two. We're gonna, we're gonna go above and beyond. We're gonna like put all this stuff into one and you'll, you'll see what I'm talking about here in a moment. All right, let's go into our graph component. And over here, again, I don't think the students can see it. Actually, let's check. Let's go back to screen two. And if I click on preview, no, I can't get in there as a student. So that's good to know. I never checked it before. I always just assumed. All right, so I'm on screen three. I clicked on my graph here. And I'm gonna make my two movable points. So A, B and then I press enter to get those sliders and CD. And again, I'm gonna go in and make the step one. Just like we did last time. All right, and just like last time, I wanna have my slope, I'm gonna call it M, and that will be Y2 minus Y1, so D minus B over um, lost my train of thought, C minus A. Now you could label these points X1, Y1, X2, Y2 if that is more helpful. Now this time I'm also going to need Z or um, B, the Y intercept, but B was already used. I already used that, so I'm gonna use Z, that's why I said it. And I noticed as I was learning about this in computation layer, they use Z as well. So if you're looking there and you're looking here, it's uh, kind of the same. Now off screen with my scrap paper and pencil, I took my two ordered pairs and I solved for the Y intercept. And it is, how did I put this in here? BC minus AD over C minus A. And I just wanna double check that. So if I move these two points here, oh, let's say if I put this one here and I put this one here, the y-intercept should be two, and the slope one. Okay, let me just try another one. Put this here, four, negative one. Okay, that's working out. All right, that's all good. Um, now what I wanna do is I want a line to actually go through these two points. So this is easy enough. We're just gonna type y equals the, our slope, which is m, x, plus our y-intercept, which is z. So you can see it goes through those points there. I am just gonna move them like that. Whatever, just put them somewhere, like how do you want the students to see it when they come onto the screen? All right, let's just preview what we have so far. This is what it looks like, and students can manipulate this. The only thing right now is like an undefined slope, but we can cover that in another, in another lesson. Okay, now some feedback. Uh, teacher wants to know if it's right or wrong, just at a quick glance, doesn't wanna have to go into every single student's uh, work to see if they have it or not. So this will be correct if, now our slope we want four thirds, which uh, is a repeating decimal. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say that the slope has to be between 1.3 and 1.4. Okay, so that's, there's gonna be three parts to this. The first part is that 
in our graph three, the number m. First, I'm gonna say that it has to be greater than 1.3. And my slope also has to be less than 1.4, okay? So graph three, that's what I named the graph component. The number of m has to be less than 1.4. All right, so these two pieces right here, they're letting me know if the student has the correct graph. Sorry, has the correct slope. And I need the y-intercept to be, what did we say, negative two? So in graph three, just grab that here, the number of z, we called our y-intercept z, has to be equal to two. That one was easy. We didn't have to do like a greater than, less than thing. Um, okay, so let's see how that works. We're gonna preview it. Um, so, teacher right now sees, oh, this didn't do anything yet. Ah, students start to do something, but they're not right. Let me show you um, what I tell my students when they're first learning this. Uh, they're going to start with the y-intercept, and I tell them to put both points on the y-intercept. And then click and drag one of them to make four-thirds. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three. Uh-oh. What did we do? I know, we said the slope was positive two. Let's go in here. This should be a negative two. How did I realize that? Now let's check. We'll do a little quicker this time. There we go. Teacher will know if it's correct at this point. Student will not. All right, now if you want the student to know if they're correct, I'm gonna come in here I don't want to type all this out again, so I'm just going to copy it. On the Mac, I'm doing a Command C. All right, on this component, we're going to click on the computation layer, and I'm going to name it variable 3a is equal to that big long mess. Now we never ever have to type that again. All right, variable 3b will be our if then statement. So when variable 3a happens, we're happy. Otherwise, we're not, okay? So in those quotation marks, I'm gonna put what I want when I'm happy and what I want uh, them to see when it's not correct. So happy, and you can even use like smiley emojis or just words. Um, but I really, I can't believe how the colors really pop for the students. All right, now what will show up on this note? This is still all behind the scenes. We didn't tell the students anything yet. So the content of the note will have, for me, I like to put, you know, are you correct? And then some feedback for them on that. So dollar sign, curly brackets, variable 3B, close the brackets, close the quotation marks, and this should work. Cross your fingers in the preview. Okay. Yes. What if they switch them? What if they put the purple one here? Of course it'll work. What if they didn't put it there? What if they put it, let's see here, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. Still works. All right. So there you have it. That's how you can make a movable line uh, with student feedback and teacher feedback.